What's up everybody and welcome to another episode of Viking in the Jungle. As you see, right now it's more of a Viking in the Garden because I'm back in the Netherlands. But I still have a lot of videos to show you about the Dominican Republic. So that's what we'll be cracking into right now. And uh, this in this episode what you'll find is one of the other inspirations that I found about Olandito. Which is Steven's farm. Now, Benyam, the plant man, has tried to get me to Steven's farm for months since I've been in the Dominican Republic and it just never came about. It just never really worked out until this one day, which I'm going to show you in this specific episode. We were kind of battling the sunset and so we had to hurry up a little bit and Steven has a lot to show. So we immediately cracked into it. There was no proper intro so I will be talking you through a little bit of what we found. Without further ado, let's crack into Steven's farm. some cardboard that he lays as mulch. And look at his tweaked out beetle. We're here. So when we first arrived to Steven's farm, I immediately fell in love with this container home. I love that his terrace is larger than his home, which is exactly what I had in mind for my home on Olandito as well. Before we knew it, Steven took us on a tour through his farm, starting with the garage, which apparently he built out of leftover wood from a construction site nearby. We tore down a house in Casa Lenda and I asked them for the wood and they said sure, so I hauled it all away and built this out of it. Now the front we did tongue and groove, so it would kind of match the, the other house. Those are a fallen down oak tree that I had cut into, uh, had cut into six by six tunnels. Nice. A little bathroom, shower, and uh, little apartment or little bedroom. So I have a desk, a right. closet, very cool. and a, a drop ceiling. Yeah, you can so see the very home. simple like construction, right? Very like simple. Yeah. We just had those white bars. Can you see them under the bill, under this thing over there? Those are hurricane straps installed because I just didn't have faith that it would hold up in a storm. So every other beam has a hurricane strap on it. 38,000. Yeah. Well, containers are crazy expensive right now. Yeah. Well, that's insulated. That's a refrigerated container, so okay. you don't have to insulate it. You don't have to do anything. There are challenges with where to put the wiring. Yeah. A lot of the wiring sits on top under the first roof, uh, and then some of it runs across the baseboard. Got it. What followed was basically an hour long tour through his garden, which I know was cut short because he has a gazillion newly planted trees right there. So sit tight because this part is going to be filled with interesting plants he is growing there. And I just want to show them all. I've got 10 acres here. This is about six, this, this piece. And you know, we've got all this over here. And so, yeah, we want to produce most of our own food. Seven years to get to this. I'd been planning this. I ran into this guy in Cabarete who was a permaculturist. Farmer Paul, they called him. Older guy from Vancouver, British Columbia. And it impressed me how everything was organic. And I always try, always my whole life, have tried to eat clean. And it's hard to do. You don't know where your things come from. And I like to eat live foods, but you, you have no idea where it comes from. And he was showing me we don't, no pesticides, no herbicides, unless they're natural. And I really like that idea, and I, so I got my permaculture certificate, I got an aquaponics certificate, I studied different areas, Centropic, and I'm online all the time looking at stuff, and I said to my wife, this is what I want to do, I want to grow old eating our own food, and so we'll have a nice, healthy, good quality of life, and she loved the idea, thankfully, and so here we are today. Love it. That's the goal. Got it. And in a couple of years, we have 120 kinds of fruit, Close to 2,000 fruit trees now. Um, somewhere right around there. We don't. I need to go back and check my mapping and yeah. dates and everything and see how they're doing. But I've just been busy. Cool. So worm farm here. We're actually just about ready to transplant everything that's in here. Wait, yeah. that's the stuff that grew out of your compost. Yeah. This is your. What do you say? This mm -hmm. is a worm farm. You put like mm -hmm. all these uh, worms in one. One place is 
for t uh, like well, the best they, soil? Their castings, their excrement is one of the best uh, fertilizers there is. A worm farm. Yeah, this is the first that's time all I've heard of it. Oh, look, it's full of worms. Oh, yeah, there's probably a million worms. And look in there. what else comes out. There's avocados. There's ch red chinola. Red chinola. I don't know what this is. Any idea? That looks like a sapote. Yeah, I think you could be right. Yeah. And then there's more avocado. Yeah, this and this is, is an anon. And this is a, um, a mahogany. Cut. Mahogany. Caoba. Pineapple. And then this is all from here, and that's a uh, pumpkin. The pumpkins are taking over the yard. Right. right. So we're getting ready to transfer the worms to here. What a good problem to have. Right. And this is the micro nursery? Yeah, oh, here. Look at all this behind Whoa, you. Whoa, look at the seed starters. You're growing at Clitoria? Yes. You're, you're going to use them for the fence lines or something? Um, we're going to dehydrate them and make tea. Oh, and man, it's so expensive. That's How long have you had this property? Um, eight months. That is unbelievable right yo when i was here eight months ago it was uh yeah, it, like this. it was a grass field with uh just thorns everywhere well these trees that are over kind of behind the wood pile there or the bonfire those are really spiny and we took out i don't even know 120 of those and they're just they're dangerous they're wow. called aromo yeah and they're, they've got spines on them like, and that's just a little spine and they break off. They love to break off under your, under your skin, oh, in your shoes. Yeah, oh my God. When so you, why do you have this? Well, they were here. They're, oh, okay. they're nature trying to fix the soil. It's a nitrogen fixer. Right. And because of the thorns, no big animals eat it. So it kind of gives the land gives a, a chance. chance. Right. Why is nitrogen important? Nitrogen uh, is, normally in the air but in order to put it in the soil there's special plants that have a relationship with bacteria in their roots and they're able to convert the nitrogen from the air into nitrogen that's bioavailable for plants oh, yeah oh and there's your <laughs> my treat so this is a little semillero here and what's well, a we'll semillero uh, seed seed place well, this is moringa all kinds of stuff growing in here. Red chinola, which is a little bit rare here compared to the yellow, and it's sweet and nice as opposed to battery acid. Okay. But, you know, has the same shell, and you pop it open, you eat it, and it's a lot sweeter. So all kinds of stuff. Oh, we planted a whole bunch of stuff today. This is going to be a septic tank back in here, and you can see what we're dealing with, about two feet of topsoil and then solid rock. This is uh, an expensive tea plant called uh, Clitoria. I can't, I don't remember the last name, but it's a purple flower that. Yeah, the edible. Exactly. And the building, do you do that yourself or there? do you hire a team? I designed it and then hired a, just a Dominican team local yeah. because I wanted to pay my neighbors as opposed to paying somebody from somewhere else. You know, I think it's good to keep you know, help help everybody. Yeah. It's kind of a permaculture thing. Not kind of, it is a permaculture thing. So lots going on here too. Some decorative stuff, but mostly food production. This is kind of a mess. We just got this installed and I realized it's got a leak somewhere. We've got a pump, a pressure tank. These come from a well that's on the very back of the property. We just drilled 414 feet and they stay full. And it's uphill, so everything's gravity feed most of the time. Nice. Yeah. And then when we want more pressure, we turn the pump on. And so, yeah. So know. how much total water is here? A thousand gallons. Okay. But we get 56 gallons a minute out of the well. So, And we have a 52,000 gallon cisterna back there that was there when we bought the property. The Flor de Jamaica. All kinds of stuff going on here. We just moved a bunch of things out to get more sun and get ready to transplant. Those are peanuts right behind you on the back. Eric, you've ever seen peanuts grow before? Nope, I have not. So these peanuts, as soon as uh, the tree starts drying up, you pull out the whole clump and, and you got, got nuts mad everywhere. Stash yeah. of nuts. Ah, so they grow on the ground. Yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah. we can kind can of find... Oh, look right here. We found a little volunteer peanut. Look at this baby peanut right here. Oh, look at that. That's look cute. It, look at it. Wow. <laughs> nice. So, it's, it's still feeding. Right. 
So that's, and this was kind of all jungle like this back in here. And so all the organic material, as we cleared land, we stockpiled, dug a ditch, put the dirt aside, filled it with organic material, and then put the dirt over the top. And, and he I, was growing the best corn I've seen on the island. We had just harvested black corn, but it didn't do well. The yellow corn did quite well, and we actually removed a bunch of it today. Mm -hmm. You got sweet potato in the corner? Yeah, let's walk around that way. All right. This is a banana circle here. Oops. This is moringa, which Ben Yum's incredibly familiar with. Single most nutritional plant on the planet. We've got hundreds of them around the farm. You can see the inside here is uh, full of organic material. It used to be a bigger mound. These are cucumbers, ginger, and then all kinds of rare fruit back in here. These banana trees then feed off the organic matter, right? Well, that becomes a sponge. Yes, they feed off the organic matter and it also keeps them watered. We're kind of new at this, so. We're well, kind of new at this, he says. <laughs> I'm kind of new at this, but Pablo knows and he said, let me show you. So I'm really pleased to have him around here. But all the way around the farm, like this, there's over a hundred fruit trees from that corner to this corner down here. And we're, what we're trying to do is get food production year round, so we planted them in different sun exposures. So we have morning sun, no sun, afternoon sun, and all day sun. Hopefully, that will produce uh, more fruit and vegetables year round. These are gonna be bottle bricks for, we're considering a chicken coop, however, I'm not so sure I want the noise. I love how quiet it is here and we wake up to birds singing and you know the wind blowing through the palm trees and stuff like that and that's kind of cool. So this is a cherry tree. This was about a foot tall eight months ago. What? Yeah. Look at that. It's doing so good. Well it likes this this spot. There's amazing uh, biomass here in the soil. Yeah it's incredible. Well this was all jungle. There's a mulberry right the ones there. The you have in pots are going to keep growing. Look at this. You recognize this area? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So my wife makes kombucha yeah. and mulberry makes an incredible flavor for kombucha and so we planted hundreds of trees. This is a chinola vine. No way. This is a chinola vine? Yeah, look, there's a chinola on the ground. Look, 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 look. I mean, we don't have a lot of production yet. Is that right? And that's not even one of the bigger ones. But there you go. It's wild. Yeah. It's... So you can see we've got chopping This is okra. Yeah. Poor guy. Right? I was in La Vega buying some rare fruit trees in this. Haitian guy was with a machete chopping his way through a bunch of pots they'd let get away and I said stop I'll take all of those and so I got I don't know a dozen of them around the farm that are this one's in the worst shape Recovery. that's a cherry tree this is yeah. tamarindo and it was about that tall eight months ago you ever chew on the leaves I haven't it mm. tastes just like tamarind yeah chew on a leaf okay. you have to keep chewing for the taste to come out Mm. It'll be really nice in teas when you make your tea stuff. Mm. That is interesting, isn't it? What farmers do? Right. So we've got five or six different kinds of uh, bamboo. You planted it? Yeah. Is what they call a Buddha. So it's it's like this when it grows up. It's kind of cool. It has a Buddha belly. Very cool. Right. Do the male papaya? Yeah. It brings bees and. This is a male papaya? Yeah. Nonstop. All year round. So, yeah. but it and doesn't it have any fruits. Smell that. They kind of smell. Oh, they, they have a real subtle but beautiful smell. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean ginger and turmeric and... So how do you know if you're growing a female or a male papaya? Too? You don't until it produces. Am I wrong? That... Until it flowers. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean until it flowers. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, Same that sucks. With, uh, yeah, it does. <laughs> One of our little puppy right here. There's so many okras. You know if you don't pick them... Um, oh, I come out here every morning. That flower's fabulous. I had mm -hmm. one this morning. The flower of the okra? Yeah. I'm not try that. It looks juicy. It's not juicy, but it's, I mean, it's a beautiful flower once it's open. So this basically is the typical permaculture farm experience I've had so far. You walk around, you pick some leaves, you eat some fruits, smell some flowers, and basically Ooh. You just really experience nature. What do you think? Did you eat the flower? Yes, it's uh, nice. It's nice. It's, yeah, right? it's really, it's a really soft taste. Yeah. Did you eat the whole thing? You're not supposed to eat the center. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I work a full-time job, which allows me to afford to have people working here and afford to build this and the gazebo and the well and all that. 
Otherwise, I would have been probably, well, there'd be a little less here, let's just say that. <laughs> because I want to show you a few things up here before yeah. it gets dark. Uh, Good. So you can see the fruit trees. Bigger trees every three meters. This is going to be super dense. Yeah. Um, bigger trees every three meters and smaller shrub and dwarf plants every two meters. See my mahogany trees. My gazebo? Yeah, yeah we just wow. had to re we just had to re-pour the floor because the guys that did it, the steel, when we chipped it out, the steel was laying on the dirt below, not encased in the concrete, so it separated. They poured one half one day and the other half the next day, and it was a poor mix. Fun. It's an expensive mistake, but so we've got this because at night. When I'm sitting up there, I can see headlights down below, and I don't want to. I don't want to see anything. So I'm, this is Flor de Mexico. This is Mexican sunflower, titonia. Right. Titonia, exactly. Super high protein, great for um, ruminants. It's uh, one of the best potassium fertilizers when you chop and drop, and the flowers smell like honey. When I destroyed this flower. So this is like a 20 foot tall pole wow. that was laying. Another banana circle, another one over here. Oops. Watch your step there. Yeah. Some cornos. This is, uh, this spot right here is probably the happiest spot on the farm and I don't know why. Could be the exposure. Everything that's planted in here, with few exception, just in this little area is so happy and everything grows faster than everywhere else. Now this is a lazy river. It goes across fun? the entire farm. It's three quarters of a mile long and or thereabout. And it's for when it rains? And it when it rains heavily and the lagoon fills up and it overflows, it will slowly go down through our property, through a, a, a variety of lagoons, to soak into our land and not the neighbors. Imagine water running down this channel, following Stephen. You know what's hilarious is the dogs fly down this and it's just really funny to watch them. They really love it. This is another banana circle. But look at these sharp angles, so, so the water is so... <laughs> hope you didn't get that on. Are these angles? Ah. With, a, with an escape here. And then we have mulberry and banana. So this is where the water of the whole property ends Well, there's up? a much bigger lagoon back here that we're going to line. This one holds water for about a week when it fills up. And then it overflows. And it down. continues all the way down to the bottom of the property. So let's go out this way. Steven, you got a kick-ass property, man. This is amazing. Arcs of trees because I, right out here is the road. And I don't want people to see into the farm. So eventually this will be really thick and nice. It's actually grown a lot. Oh yeah, so you're basically building a wall of trees. Well, this will be market garden. So this will be where people can come and pick and see how it's grown and pick the product. And the farm store will be on the asphalt or right on the edge of the asphalt. And so we'll have a cleaning and processing facility back in here. This is all covered in fruit trees. And they're not very well marked. So. <laughs> it's like, it's funny what you say like, and this is all covered in fruit trees, but that's basically your entire farm. Yeah, well, <laughs> a 1300 fruit trees Plus, I'm not really counting the five or six hundred, maybe more mulberry. But I want. But in a couple of years, this is going to be incredible. Oh, I'll this be will be shade and just beautiful property. I want to show you something really cool over here. What are you doing? This is I just, new, uh, I just named her Molly. Molly. Molly, what a sweetie. Look at how she is, and this is Leela. Leela gets a little jealous when I pet Molly. Leela is so beautiful. Isn't she? Oh, this is like dog heaven here, man. I mean, you should see these guys from the second they come out in the morning. So look right here. See, so this tree right here has a big honeybee nest in it. That thick part of it? Yeah. So we got more water line that we're gonna lay. There's <laughs> so much here. <laughs> So quite a few veggies and stuff growing in here. Eggplants, peppers, I think that's beets. This looks like cabbage. Got some bok choy, some chives, some arugula, tomatoes. You know, sunflowers, I understand, are the only flowers that when it's cloudy, they turn and take energy from each other. And so this is a sunflower circle like the Mayan Indians used to do. 
Yeah. I come out here and do my good mornings in the morning to get me going. Yeah, that spinach just fell over, so I need to... Oh man, where did you get these cherries? These are long lost. Oh, these are so good. This genetic was around everywhere, and now it's gone. Well, not gone. I have to bring this one back to life. Wipe it off a little bit. There's no chemicals or anything, but it's just the calcium from the water. What's that, Benio? This is the most delicious, productive cherry tomato you can right? grow. It exploded. They're the best. Mm -hmm. It's a taste explosion. And I haven't eaten one in two years because I lost the genetic. I come out here every morning and eat like a dozen. <laughs> and then I go have breakfast. <laughs> so all in all, Steven's farm is a big inspiration for me, for Olandito. It showed me how when you put your mind to something, you get a piece of land that might first be a jungle. When you put your mind to it and you deliberately design your piece of land, you will be able to create all kinds of mini worlds within your land, creating an extremely expressive journey when you're walking through your own land. You grab a little bit of leaves over here, you grab a little bit of fruits over there, and you create this surplus that you can then share with the community. There is so much to this land, and even in one or two or three visits, although you've seen all the corners of the land, there is definitely way more to it. There is layers upon layers upon layers of complexity which makes this land so beautiful. And I cannot wait to come back here in a couple of years and see all these trees growing big and truly walking through a food forest. <laughs>